Hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis, and these are the four big stories for today. So the first is that Kiev's top general says that Ukraine needs fewer troops than expected. Now, I, I hope and pray that that is a military decision, not a political decision. If that's a political decision, we're going to be back in a more difficult place later on. But here's what he says. President Volodymyr Zelensky said in December that his military had proposed mobilizing up to 500,000 more Ukrainians into the armed services as Russia stepped up attacks along the 1,000-kilometer front. Commander-in-Chief Alexander Sersky, who was appointed last month, said in an interview with Ukrainian media published on Friday that the figure had been significantly reduced. Now, remember, part of the tension between Zelensky and Zeluzhny was that Zeluzhny was asking for 500000 So why it would be reduced at this point, I, I don't know. I hope it's a military decision. He did not name a new figure, so I can't say if it's 300, 400, 200,000, whatever it is. We expect that we will have enough people capable of defending the motherland, told uh, the Ukra Ukrainiform news agency. I'm talking not only about the mobilized, but also the volunteer fighters. So, again, if it's a military decision, great. If it's not, we have a problem. Second, big story. Ukraine signs an agreement with the United States on debt payment deferral. Uh, this is a signing of uh, an agreement was conditioned by the provision of the Memorandum of Understanding on the Debt Service Suspension of Ukraine with a group of official creditors from the G7 and Paris Club, the report says. The agreement will allow us to reduce the debt burden on state budget, as well as allocate funds that were supposed to be a repayment of servicing for debt for obligations for social and humanitarian needs. So this is smart because instead of having to pay right now, what they're allowed to do is actually, it's like, it's almost like giving them extra money in the short term. Well, they still have a loan, but that money can be used for other needs in the short term. I think this might be the path of the future for military spending, some kind of um, loan, and I don't prefer a loan, I prefer that they give them the material that they need, some kind of loan that can be bonded or uh, you know wiped out later on, or maybe tie that loan to Russian reparations later on to bring us, us closer. I, I'm not sure exactly how that will work out, or uh, this is my speculation, but I think that's the way the future might go. Zelensky had a conversation with Speaker of the House Mike Johnson the other day. The president spoke about the situation on the battlefield. What I really want to show you is this, Randy Mott's analysis, and, and I think, again, this is where my head is going of what I perceive. The deal seems to be headed for loaning the equipment without any U.S. budget impact. This decouples military transfer from the backfilling that has been used to replace the unused stored equipment with modern upgrades. In this vein, the loan approach will provide a pathway for more aid over the longer haul than the current approach. We'll see what happens with that. Um, I don't see any movement in Congress today in major news, uh, but I did see this one article in uh, MSNBC, or no, sorry, uh, in uh, The Independent. Between U uh, Ukraine and Marjorie Taylor Greene, Mike Johnson has a tightrope to walk. Okay, here's what just happened. First, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky announced that he had spoken with Johnson and explained that quick passage of U.S. aid by Congress is vital. Later in the day, Johnson announced the managers for the Senate trial of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas after the House voted to impeach him last month. Okay. I'm a Republican and I can't see any possible, like an, a real Republican and not a moderate Republican. I mean, full-blown Republican. I mean, I'm socially conservative, economically conservative, and on foreign policy, I'm conservative like Ronald Reagan would have been. And I can't fathom why we're involved in an impeachment when we know full well that there are not enough votes in the Senate to actually remove the Secretary of Homeland Security short of having video of him in a hotel room talking to Putin directly about how, here, I'm taking your money, you're giving me uh, the, the direct material of who I'm supposed to let into the country and who I'm not. I mean, without that kind of scenario, uh, let in these terrorists and here's my money, or you, it's just not going to happen. I don't think they have the level of evidence necessary for the outrage that could actually flip the Democrat senators in order to remove him. And so we're going to simply go through this trial for what reason? For a show. 
and it's unfortunate and it looks political probably is political did he do what we would hope he would do at the border no but did he do something that rises to the level of criminal like treason or something along those lines that would get him removed no so okay at any rate here's the kicker though <laughs> Johnson's decision to name Green, yeah, that Green, Marjorie Taylor Green, Marjorie Taylor Green, who's holding the sword of Damocles over uh, Johnson's head with the motion to vacate that she hasn't put in yet, but can do it any time. Johnson's decision to name Green to the committee, especially after his talk with Zelensky, shows how the leader of the U.S. House of Representatives has tried to balance keeping conservatives happy while also fulfilling his basic duties of governing. Well, a little modification. The MAGA conservatives happy or the MAGA Republicans happy while doing that because, yeah, okay. At any rate, that's just, uh, that's bizarre. If you want to contact Mike Johnson... You can still do it. His number's right here, 202-225-2777. Uh, I have three. If you want to, contact the, the House or if you want to contact the Senate. I have these three. Just go to my videos. You see home video shorts, live playlist store, con and then in the uh, search bar, just type in contact, and you'll get all three of these videos. Now, if you contact Mike Johnson, this, is, this number is about like putting in the... Uh, Senate bill. Go ahead and do that. It doesn't hurt to do that. But let's look at the discharge petition because this is interesting. So for the discharge pet petition, you would go to this address, clerk.house.gov discharge petition. That's the address that you would go to and you can see all the discharge petitions. And here we're going to look at discharge petition numbers a, uh, 9 and 10. These are the ones that we want to pay attention to. Number 9, view petition. How many people have signed the discharge petition so far? Well, we scroll down. We need 100. Well, here we go. So we have 191. How many are needed? Well, we need 218 voting members, not delegates, like a delegate from uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands or Puerto Rico or something like that. 218 voting members, and we right now have 191. So we're short, but we could still fill it up. That would force it onto the floor. Um, the other discharge petition didn't get quite as far. Uh, this is the other one, the Republican one, and it only has 16. <laughs> so only 16. The Democrats don't want to really sign that one, and uh, it's not going anywhere, and it would be a longer path either way. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Last little bit. So this is the fourth story. So yesterday I saw Jake Bro had posted, hey everyone, YouTuber Joe Blogs had his YouTube channel hacked and stolen. All of his videos are gone and it had been replaced with a crypto scam. Uh, I immediately uh, retweeted, please help, Joe does great work. I just highlighted Joe last week in this video where we were talking about Russian oil capacity and he does a great job with the economic component to show us what's going on uh, in mostly in Russia of what's happening economically. Economically. Like these are oil refineries by the size of what where the strike was and where the capacity was. Okay, so if you want to help Joe Blogs, you can watch this video here. I explain exactly what you need to do in order to reach out and uh, to YouTube in order to tell them what to do. A number of these kinds of things have happened over the course of the last oh, year or so. Uh, there was first Mercado and uh, the Enforcer. And what the Enforcer did to Mercado never should have happened. He was threatening to take away his YouTube channel because of their dispute, and that shouldn't have happened. And then you had um, ATP Geopolitics, Johnny Pierce. You had Combat Vet Reacts. Uh, they had some squirrely things where um, I, I think what happened there was that maybe some Russian trolls were trying to get them uh, demonetized or something along those lines, and so they had some hard times. And then we had the big thing with with Warthog, and we got Warthog restored. Um, Arthur Ray has had something with uh, PayPal removing him. We want to help here to the degree that it's possible to help. Okay, thank you very much if you're willing to do that. Finally, uh, I think that the way that this happened might have been something like this. Michael McFowl put out warning, if you received an email message from my assistant yesterday or from this address, John E. Herbst, uh, asking you to read a Russian strategy paper, do not open 
it's a hacking operation. Now, I'm not suggesting that that's the one, but something like that is probably how he got hacked. I don't know um, what it is, uh, in fact, but that could have well, very well been it. By the way, when you email me something, please tell me how to get there because I'm very reluctant to click on a link for just that reason. Change my password again today and I'm very careful with security. Thank you for telling me about that. Many of you have said, hey, be double down on your security. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, last little thing. Here's, I saw this on Twitter and I thought, what do you think they've done? Okay, so this is Viktor Orban, and this quote is, the best option for Ukraine would be to become a buffer zone between the West and Russia and receive security guarantees. But they had security guarantees, and those security guarantees were overrun, and that's why we're in the situation that we're in right now. That's not enough. All right. Those are my four big stories. Thank you for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for caring. Thank you for writing about Joe Blogs. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and the coffees. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.